13% of the workforce is employed in manufacturing and engineering sector. Here in the North East, we actually export more than we import. Our members have been frustrated over the past years with the funding landscape regarding skills and the fact that they haven't been able to get the training and the development that they actually require for their jobs to go forward. And that is why we had the skills group really looking at what the issues were with skills within the North East. We need to have a highly skilled and motivated workforce. The workforce is very important to us and uh, we've got a lot of highly skilled people within the workforce and we need more. The workforce is key to every successful business. You have to work with a team, you need to be successful and you only can be if you have a team behind you. The workforce are our greatest asset and as any asset they need to be looked after, they need to be nurtured and developed. The workforce is integral to everything that we do. Future proofing is about investment in people and skills and development that's necessary to secure our growth. Uh, we started several years ago with two apprentices and at present we have 26 apprentices down on the shop floor and that again, if I talk about manufacturing, if I said it's a backbone of the economy, this apprentice scheme guarantees our sustainable growth and future. We need to show the young men that's out there the skills because we're always going to need steel workers. My main role is the uh, pre-production planning of a subcontract part that comes through the, the factory. Um, it's from the, the quoting stage to uh, source of material um, and then doing the offline programming for the parts before they go into the CNC uh, machines. The thing I like most about working in manufacturing is, like, especially in welding, I work in a shipyard and I get, I get to see such a huge variety of work going on because we're not just ship repair, we're ship build, you know. And um, at the minute we're doing the Elizabeth class, Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers, you know. I take great pleasure in seeing a sheet of steel come in through the bottom doors and leave as a crane when it comes out. Labour produces the best quality cranes. So for us it, it, it's, a, it's a thing of pride really. Uh, I always like the, uh, the hands-on uh, approach to, to working in an uh, environment like this. If you've got a practical, practical mind and, and you want to develop your skills you know, in, in technology, it's, it's an ideal business to get into. Um, there's always room for you know, learning. It's not just a case of doing your training as an apprentice and it stops there. You're developing all the time, throughout your lifetime as an engineer I would say. I chose a career in manufacturing mainly because of the opportunities that are available, you know, I mean, I'm an apprentice and it's an entry level sort of place to start, but once you, you get your, out your time, become a welder of whatever it is you choose to do in the, in the industry, you can then go on to become supervisors, managers of companies, anything like that, I mean, I was lucky to get my apprenticeship at 22 year old, I'm currently working with a supervisor now who's 29 he was the team leader at 27, you know, so the opportunities aren't just there for people who've been there a long time, the, the opportunities are there for people who are good at what they do, you know. It's our bread and butter, it's what we do best. Uh, taking a raw material and turning it into a finished product is satisfying in itself. But to see what goes on behind the scenes from that blank piece of paper through to seeing the finished product come out the door that meets customer expectations and is a value product is even more satisfying for me. With the right engineering skills, it allows us to uh, take forward all our business improvement activities. If we invest in new machinery, we upskill the workforce, and that will give us a return on our investment. And again, we have an Investors in People badge on our wall, and I firmly believe that we invest in our people. And part of that investment is giving them the right skills and development to enable them to do their job efficiently and effectively. The two areas that we need to focus in over the course of the year, one I would say is around HR optimization and efficiency to make sure that all the parts of the HR service are joined up properly and providing the best service to our customers within inside the businesses. And the second area, and I think this is clearly the most important for us, is about resourcing, investment in skills, investment in leadership and uh, making sure that we can plan ahead. You know, securing our future now is, is the key HR objective and that is about those people and that is about investment for the future. 
We've got about 150 people in the uh, group so far and we need to recoup more at this very point in time. Uh, we're investing heavily. Uh, we're investing almost 4 million in new plant and equipment and uh, a new factory uh, this year. We're right in the middle of that investment. And uh, the investment will be nothing without the people to make uh, turn that investment into a good business. Technology, I've just invested in 2 million in new machines and uh, uh, the most advanced machines you can get but they won't do anything for us unless we've got the right skills there to make sure that they run efficiently and effectively. Our workforce is crucial. It's the most important asset a business has, especially in an, uh, in an increasingly competitive climate. I, I think it's vitally important uh, to have the right skill level in our business to ensure we continue to improve our growth and efficiency. We also need to ensure that we meet future skill needs we're the effort delighted to be holding the Skills Summit here in Newcastle. The Skills Summit is a culmination of the work that the North East Skills Group have been doing over the past year.